Happy 30th anniversary to the Atari Jaguar, their much maligned yet strangely heralded entry into the fifth generation Bit Wars. They infamously wanted the gaming class to do the math, and many gamers chose to skip school that day and take home a PlayStation or a Nintendo 64 instead. So in order to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Atari Jaguar, earlier this year I thought about making an entire project on it. Like, I wanted to review every single game from like Gutter to Throne and rank them, but why not review every single Jaguar game at sonic speed. 15 seconds or less, every single game we're gonna cover it. Let's not waste any more time, let's do it to it. Air Cars. The first of many 3D space shooters on the Jaguar, you move around in boring, low-poly 3D landscapes, destroy your targets on a subpar frame rate with simply awful controls, and you die really quickly in this game. Yeah, no fun at all. Alien vs. Predator, wonderfully atmospheric first-person shooter that's really three games in one, where you can play as the alien, the predator, or the marine. If you can handle the somewhat low frame rate and the acid pools from the aliens, you'll have fun with this one. Atari Karts, the Jaguar's attempt at a Mario Kart clone. Despite them giving much-needed love to my boy Bentley Bear, the entirely flat environments, ho-hum characters and music, and questionable invisible walls diminish the fun pretty quickly. Attack of the Mutant Penguins. I can't sum this game up in 15 seconds, but this Jaguar exclusive tower defense action hybrid has a lot going on and it's very, very strange. But it's oddly charming and quite addictive once you get the hang of it. I dug it. Breakout 2000. It's exactly what you think it is. Breakout in 3D. It's fine, even if the controls seem a bit awkward on a D-pad and not on a rotary knob. It's very unnecessary and to be honest, I got bored pretty quickly. Brutal Sports Football. So imagine the Midway Pigskin Football arcade game, but a lot more violent. If it weren't for the jerky frame rate, I'd say that this game is great, but it's not enough to make you not want to play it. It's fun in small doses. Bubsy and Fractured Furry Tales. Oh lord, the worst Bubsy game. Yeah, I mean that. It's almost impossible to play due to the high enemy frequency, Bubsy moving too fast for the screen, and even wonkier jumping mechanics than the other games. I stick up for Bubsy more often than you'd think, but even I can't defend this trash. Cannon Fodder. There are quite a few PC strategy game ports on the Jaguar, and uh, yeah, this is one. The controls and menus seem to work well on the controller, and once you figure it out, it's fun. Checkered Flag. Virtual Racing, this is not. A Formula One racing game that often moves at a subpar frame rate, has incredibly finicky controls, and simply awful sound. To think this was supposed to sell Jaguar consoles, just stick to the Lynx game. Club Drive. I hated this game at first, but once you realize you're a tiny little Hot Wheels car in a giant world where you explore to find things within the time limit, it's shockingly fun. Give it a little bit of patience on Club Drive like I did, and you just might enjoy it. Cybermorph. Yes, it's that game with the green radio lady. Where did you learn to fly? Now with that meme out of the way, once you start flying around Cybermorph, you'll see that it's quite enjoyable, if not a bit hard. Smooth controls, good speed, and satisfying shooting action. It's no Star Fox, but it's more fun than the internet would have you believe. Defender 2000. Unlike Breakout 2000, Defender 2000 is so wild and insane, yet feels very faithful to the arcade original. It's colorful, wacky environments, lots of unlockables, including a faithful port of the original, and a killer soundtrack. This one's a must play, provided you can handle the flashing lights. Doom. The best home port of Doom for its time. You know what Doom is, so I'll just say it looks great, it plays great, and while it doesn't have in-game music, this is the home Doom conversion that just nails everything else. Double Dragon 5, The Shadow Falls, the first of many failed Jaguar fighting games. This ugly, soulless cash grab of a Mortal Kombat clone has no right to bear the Double Dragon name, especially since it's practically unplayable without the six-button Jaguar controller. I hated it on Genesis, and I especially hate it here. Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, and right into another fighting game. Based on the movie of the same name, I suppose it's faithful to the film and graphically doesn't look bad, but the awkward controls and collision detection make this a slog to play. Evolution, Dino Dudes. So the lemming style strategy games aren't really my thing, but I can say that this rendition of the humans looks and plays just fine. If you're into these kinds of games, it's worth a look. Fever Pitch Soccer, also known as Head-On Soccer on Genesis and Super NES, this really doesn't look like a 64-bit Jaguar game at all, but putting aesthetics aside, this is one of my favorite soccer games at the time, and it's just pure fun on the Jag. Fight for Life. With all respect to the toward development history of this game, at its release, it's just an awful 3D fighting game. I understand why it came out how it did, but still, it's hideous to look at and even more hideous to play. Stay far away. 
Flashback, the quest for identity. A cinematic side-scroller in the vein of Prince of Persia that requires trial and error, like a, a lot of trial and error, and Flashback is still a really well-made game that's worth checking out. I just hope you're a lot more patient with it than I was. Flip Out, a puzzle game where you flip all the tiles over to match one color. If it weren't for the odd perspective, I'd say this is a fun one because the concept is solid, but I was more confused than I was entertained while playing it. Hover Strike, yay, another 3D space shooter with an awful frame rate. What was originally going to be Battlezone 2000, Hover Strike's dreary environments, janky controls, and high repetition pretty much kill any fun to be had here. Maybe the sequel was better, but eh, I don't care enough. I War, and yet another 3D space shooter. There are cool colors in the stages, different camera angles, and an attempt at switching things up by being in a virtual world, but it's also very repetitive and not fun to play. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. International Sensible Soccer. I'm sure fans know what this game is, and I've never been a fan of the Sensible series. Way too sim-like and graphically minimal for my taste. I think you know if you're into this kind of thing, but it's not for me. Iron Soldier. Now this is how a 3D polygonal action game on the Jag should be. You take control of a giant mech and blow up anything that stands in your way. Lots of weapons, customizations, and detailed environments and varieties in its missions definitely make this one worth your time. Iron Soldier 2. It's pretty identical to the first game, only slightly improved visuals and more weapons, but unfortunately a huge spike in difficulty from the first game. I'm good for a challenge, but they moved the needle way too far in this one. Just stick to the original. Kasumi Ninja. I'm all for campy fighting games that they're fun, and I know that there's some hardcore defenders for Kasumi Ninja, but I'm sorry, not only is it dumb and borderline offensive now for some, it's just cumbersome to play. Fire it up for the memes if you must, but then promptly bin it after. Missile Command 3D, another case of great ideas with poor execution. You can tell that this game was made with the VR headset in mind as you switch from turret to turret in 3D to protect the bases. It's very hard to keep track of it all and you just wind up losing repeatedly because of it. Nope. NBA Jam Tournament Edition, a fine port of one of the greatest sports games of all time, though I will say the computer AI is quite broken in this version, so bring your A game if you're going to play it solo, but otherwise, boom shakalaka! Pinball Fantasies. Choose from four pinball tables to fulfill your, well, fantasies, but after playing all four tables, none of them really interested me and the ball physics just feel weird. It's always tricky to get video pinball physics right and I feel they failed on this one. Pitfall The Mayan Adventure. Like Flashback, this platformer based on the classic franchise was on every console and the Jag version is fine. It's completely unnecessary and doesn't show off any of the Jag's power, but it's still fun to play. Better than the 32X version at least. Power Drive Rally. I love isometric racing games, and the Power Drive series has always been fun, so this Jaguar game doesn't disappoint. Smooth graphics, and it plays great. Not much to say, it's definitely recommended. Raiden, a classic vertical shooter that I've always been terrible at. Raiden is pretty much always solid no matter what console it's on. The Jaguar version has a slightly slower frame rate and a strange sidebar that takes up a lot of the screen, but other than that, it's good. Rayman, his original console debut, Rayman is a gorgeous 2D platformer that may be hard as nails, but it's still a delight, provided you give it the patience. The other versions of this game may be better, but this is a great start for the man with no limbs. Ruiner Pinball, the other Jag video pinball game, but this one only has two boards, but the boards are very well designed, colorful, and a lot of fun to play. Especially dig the split multiball mechanic. Had a lot of fun with this one. Super Burnout. The Jags attempt at a super scalar racing game is a smash of an achievement. Fantastic sense of speed, fun track design, and great sound design make this game possibly the biggest hidden gem of the Jaguar lineup. Supercross 3D. How the hell did Atari think releasing this broken, confusing, and ugly racing game was a good idea? Tiertex completely dropped the ball and somehow made a motocross game that's even worse than Motocross Championship on the 32X. In my opinion, the worst game on the Jaguar by far. Syndicate. Bullfrog Cyberpunk Strategy Opus but on the Jaguar? Sure. I was never a big fan of this game back then, but just like Evolution Dino Dudes, I don't see anything wrong with the sport. If it's your jam, go for it. Tempest 2000. The Jaguar's killer app still to this day. Tempest 2000 takes the arcade classic and injects it with wild colors and insane amount of enemies and things to do and an iconic soundtrack that is a must listen for its time. Believe the hype. It's awesome. Theme Park. Take everything I said about Syndicate and just apply it here. Tower Sue, Plight of the Stargazer. I applaud the attempt at making a 3D dungeon crawler on the Jaguar, but it's just a slog to move around, it's ugly to look at, and very confusing to understand how it all works. And by the time you figure it out, you just get murdered over and over. Meh. 
Trevor McFern, the Crescent Galaxy. Remember how I said Cybermorph was unfairly damned by the internet? Well, the discourse on Trevor McFern is justified. One of the most boring side-scrolling shooters I've ever played. The only real appeal to this game is if you're into the anthropomorphic characters or not. If you're not, hard pass. Troy Aikman, NFL Football. The only traditional football game on the Jag, and unfortunately, it's a boring one that plays even worse than its 16-bit siblings. A useless game, really. Ultra Vortec, the final and arguably the best game of the Jaguar fighting lineup, but that's not saying much. It's still pretty rough to play like the others, but at least Ultra Vortec has a strange charm to it. I won't lie and say that I didn't at least have a little bit of fun figuring this game out. Eh, it's worth a look, but just barely. Val desires skiing and snowboarding. I really hope I pronounced that right, but regardless, this is a fun winter sports racing game that has a great sense of speed and responsive controls. I'll ignore that it's nearly exactly the same as the Super NES game and still say that it's, it's a fun one for Jag owners. White men can't jump. I, I, I can't even with this game. Just one of the ugliest basketball games ever made while playing even worse, complete with forced 90s attitude and annoying taunts that appear while trying to make shots. I'd rather play Slam City with Scottie Pippen, and that says a lot. Wolfenstein 3D, an excellent point of one of the granddaddies of first-person shooters, just like Doom, you know what Wolfenstein is, so I'll just say that they did a great job, and if you like first-person shooters, you're gonna love it. Worms, another strategy game port that plays and looks just fine if you're into Worms. You know, the game. The game. Not actual Worms, but the game. Zero Five, another 3D space shooter, but this one plays more like an on-rail shooter. Zero Five puts you in an awkward position behind the ship, then changes it up randomly with flashing lights everywhere and shots everywhere, and just it's it's overstimulation central. I have no idea what I'm doing, and eh, not digging it. Zool 2, the sequel to one of the more infamous Sonic clones here, a super speedy green ninja that collects all the officially licensed candy and reaches the end of the super colorful stages. Yet somehow, even with all this going on, it just feels so hollow, just like its predecessor. Not great, but eh, still better than Bubsy at least. Zoop, a heavily marketed puzzle by Viacom, you move across the center field eliminating shapes of similar colors when you shoot them, but if you shoot another color, you turn into that color. Keep the center clear within the time limit and move on. It's solely unnecessary on Jaguar, but I had fun. Wow, there was actually a lot more hits than misses in the Jaguar library than I thought, right? I was expecting it to be a lot worse than that, but there were some games that shocked me, like uh, Club Drive, and there were some that like really, really was just awful, like Supercross 3D. But what are your thoughts? Did you have an Atari Jaguar growing up? Did you do the math? Do you still have one? And what are some of your favorite games? Of course, leave comments. I want to hear what you have to say. Let me know exactly what you're thinking about the Jaguar. And while you're there, leave a like, subscribe, follow me on pretty much anything social media. Come join my Twitch stream four days a week on Twitch twitch.tv slash sheets in the next level and of course i've got my patreon if you want to be extra supportive to the channel and as always be you and be awesome i'm g and i'll see you on the next level